Do you want to make your GNOME desktop look better? Well, there's a great tool to use. It's called GNOME Tweaks, which allows you to access even more fun GNOME customization options. And today I'll be showing you how to install and use GNOME Tweaks so you can get more features for your desktop. First off, I'm using Ubuntu 22.02. I'm going to launch the Ubuntu Software Center because this is the easiest way to download the application. Let's make things super easy on ourselves. Let the catalog update. And now we can go and search for the GNOME Tweaks app. Go to the top left-hand corner, hit the magnifying glass and just type in GNOME Tweaks. That should bring it up. And look at that tweak, advanced GNOME 3 settings. This will work with GNOME 4 as well. So you can install this, even though you might be using a newer version of GNOME, no big deal. Just hit the install button and type in your administrative password so you can install. It'll take a few moments to install. And then once it is installed, you can find it by searching through activities for tweaks. Here's the icon for it. Just click on that. And now we've launched the tweaks app and we've officially installed it. So tweaks is one of those nice to have apps that I like installing on any distribution that has GNOME on it because it gives me access to a few extra things that you can't typically get to using the basic settings of of Linux distributions. So in general, we have suspend when laptop lid is closed. So if you have a laptop and you want to not suspend, you can uncheck this when your lid is closed. On appearance, this one is the more interesting one. The current cursor is Yaru, and you can switch through pretty easily through all the various different cursors. I'll use the red glass cursor. As you can see now, my cursor is much more predominant and has a very large drop shadow icons, you can switch between the various different icons. Let's say you like dark icons. Well, you'll notice in the background, the icon changing as we're going through some of these, choose one that you like. One of my favorites is the humanity dark. You can change up sounds as well or your desktop background. If you have an image, it's fairly easy to do it from here as well. Although you can do that one in settings, but there are a few extra adjustments so you can change how things look. As you can tell, this is more of a centered wallpaper now with that adjustment. Again, a few extra customizations with the GNOME Tweaks tool. For new users, especially starting out with GNOME, you should definitely get it so you can further customize your desktop. One of the great things is fonts can be changed. So you don't have to use the Ubuntu regular font for your interface text. Instead, you can change it to whatever you like that's available on your system. Of course, you can install new fonts and they will be available in here. But if you like something like let's say Droid. Instead, we can see that things are getting updated in the background. My text has changed. Let's see if we do a few more just to see a bit of a change. There's Deja Vu. And I'll go to one of my favorite fonts here, Noto Sans. And you can also change the default document text. So when a document opens up, this will be the text that shows up. We also have monospace text, legacy window titles, and what they show up as. The hinting of the text can be full, medium, slight, or none. And the scaling factor can be changed as well. You have anti-aliasing features for grayscale, none, or subpixel for LCD screens. We'll go on to the keyboard and mouse section, which allows you to change some of the shortcut features, such as an overview shortcut, left super key, right super key, additional layout options. If you'd like to change other keys up, the mouse can be changed up a little bit and the touchpad. One of my favorites on by default is disable while typing. If you're using your keyboard on your laptop, your touchpad is deactivated. That way you're not moving things around the screen. You can also say what the touchpad does at the bottom here, depending on where you click on things. Another great and easy thing to use is startup applications. Do you want some application to start up when you log in with your user? Now you can do that. Just click the add button, go through. Let's say I love playing solitaire. I can add this in and now next time my system boots up, guess what? I'll riot solitaire will boot up with the system and make my startup experience better. The top bar will allow you to change things up here. So if I don't like the date being displayed, I can take that out. Now I only have the clock, but if I want more, I can add it in like weekday date and seconds. I really don't like putting in seconds. So I'm going to remove that and the default is fine with me, which is the date. Calendar can change as well. We can add in week numbers. So you'll notice there's a number now added to the calendar and it says 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 for the 17th week through the 22nd week as displayed on the calendar for the year. 
I personally like this feature and another little customization tweak that you can use with GNOME Tweaks. I'll also be showing you another tool that you can install, which further helps you customize your GNOME desktop environment. But before we do that, if you're ready to start learning about Linux today, check out my Linux checklist and cheat sheet at learn.savvynick.com. There's a link below. Let's finish out these last couple subcategories before moving on to that other tool. As a bonus, we have the window title bars and what happens when you click on window title bars. Double clicking will toggle it to the maximum, but we could also minimize it if we wanted to instead. So for example, let's launch files. And now when I double click, it goes away in the title bar. We can also do other things such as toggle maximize vertically, which is a nice one. If you now double click up here, it'll make sure to fill the screen vertically. Toggle shade, let's see what that does. Menu, let's see what that does. Well, there you go. Now you get a menu like you would if you clicked over. So double click menu, which is my favorite. Then you can use some of the options for this window, like, like taking a screenshot, hiding, maximizing, doing extra things all by double clicking on the title. You also have features for the middle click or the secondary click as well. Again, that's interacting with any of the title bars that you see like up top here. Also, some distributions do not give you the maximize button in, in the title bar by default. And this is a great place to add that feature right back in. You can select this maximize toggle on. It is toggled here already by default in GNOME in Ubuntu 22.04. But if you're used to having the placement on a different side, you can toggle it around. And as you can see up top, you notice how it's getting moved from left to right. Finally, the windows category allows you to center new windows, resize with secondary clicks, specify a window action key or super key, also known as a super or mod key. And finally, there's another option for window focus, which means when either you click on the window focus or do the secondary click, it will allow you to focus in on that window. Click to focus is what I like, but focus on hover might be of interest to some other people. So with the center new windows, Selected, now if I open up something like my mail client, notice it's right in the middle of the screen, centered. All right, well, since you made it this far, smash that like button for me. Let's talk about that other tool, which will further extend the customized experience here in GNOME Desktop. Let's go back to the Software Center. If you hit Ubuntu Software Center, launch it. Let's search for extensions. This app actually used to be a subcategory of the GNOME Tweaks tool but now you'll have to get a separate tool in order to manage extra extensions for the GNOME shell, but you can get the extension manager. Here's one. There's also another one available, the official GNOME project one, but I personally enjoy this one. So I'm going to install the extension manager from Matthew here, and then I'll type in my user password and let things install real quick. You can also just get the GNOME extensions from the GNOME project as well. We'll install both just to have them and I'll show you a little bit of the differences between them. All right, with those installed, let's search for them by typing in extension. We have extensions and extension manager. Let's launch the one from the GNOME project first. So there's a few already built in here. Desktop icons extension, Ubuntu app indicators extension, and the Ubuntu dock. So the Ubuntu dock is a special dock that's made here just for Ubuntu. So if you disable this, your dock goes away. You can, of course, filter your extensions up here but this app doesn't really allow you to install new extensions that easily. That's why we're going to use the other tool, but this does allow you to turn them on and off, especially if you have issues. It's nice to have this one right here, which disables all extensions and gets you back to a working state. All right, let's go to the other extensions tool. So extensions manager this time, and this one allows you to install and browse and gives you access to some of the same things that you already saw in the last manager. So it says user installed extensions. So how do you install one? Very simply go up to browse and then search for something. If you sort by popularity, you'll notice that that gives you the most popular extensions. And one of them is the user themes, which I highly suggest installing because then you can install other user themes onto your system and make your system that much more customized. And you can search for themes on a GNOME theme website. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can search for more themes and figure out how to install them. But there's some popular ones that I actually want to install. One is like it says blur. So I want a blur effect 
here adds a blur look to different parts of the GNOME shell, including top panel, dash, and overview. So I'm going to install this one. It's as simple as hitting install. That will install things. And you'll notice up top, it's now blurred a little bit. This desktop background doesn't really do it justice. So let me change the background so you can tell a little better. Now you'll notice up top, it's blurred. On the left-hand corner, it's now blurred as well. Not a solid color. I personally like this effect. Some of you might not, but it's as easy as going back into the manager and disabling it. So one thing I will mention with this tool, you can disable everything by hitting this button up top. Notice how everything goes back to normal by hitting this button. Just know what that's used for. So if you wanna re-enable all your system extensions, including the user installed extensions, just click on that. Also know that there are some default settings in all of these, and you can edit those settings by clicking the cog next to the enable button. Now you can set different settings for each of these extensions. Just know at the bottom that there are even more things to go through for these extensions. Don't miss out because this is a very powerful GNOME customization tool. Finally, let's get something fun real quick. I'm gonna actually get the burn my windows extension. Quite fun. We're gonna disintegrate our windows with style as it says. Let's go back to installed and it says burn my windows. I'm gonna hit the settings and we get to choose our effects if we want, but let's just look at the default. Just know that there are a ton of settings for each of the different effects that were now installed. Let's look at the default ones again. So if I start something up like files and I exit out of it, you'll notice how it burns away. So that's the default function here. And now whenever you close something out, it'll burn but there's also plenty of other effects to test with. So if you wanna change that up, very easy, burn my windows, hit the settings, choose an effect. So let's just say when things open up, I'm gonna do the hexagon effect. When things close, I'm gonna use the broken glass effect. Now let's try doing this and seeing what happens this time. So now you notice the hexagons when opening and the burn effect when closing. I don't think it took the one I wanted for close animation. So let me try changing that. I don't want fire. I just want broken glass. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Opened up hexagon close. We have shattering into pieces like glass in front of you. Now, these are just a few things I wanted to mess around and show you. Extensions has a lot more awesome free and open source user-based effects that you can get directly in the extensions manager app. Make sure to get both the GNOME project one as well as the one supplied by Michael, because in my opinion, it's much better than the GNOME project one, but that's a good place to start if you just want to enable and disable pre-existing extensions. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that like button for me. Also make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.